Hi, that's Nancy McCacken for Living Karma Yoga, and this is a program that brings you all of the what the yoga world has to offer to help you live better, which we call taking yoga off the mat. So yoga is not just about asana, striking a pose or moving into tree. Yoga is about living mindfully and peacefully, and we work with our bodies in order to release tension and open up kind of some stored um, things, some creaks in our body. Uh, but we also use pranayama, which are breathing techniques. We use mantra, which are sound. Um, we use meditation. Uh, we lifestyle in Ayurveda. So there's a whole lot more to yoga than just the posture. However, posture is where we like to begin because we live in a physical body. And if our physical body is uncomfortable, it's very difficult to be peaceful, equanimous, and joyful. So today, uh, I'm gonna show you how to use the wall. It's called, the uh, segment is entitled, uh, Up Against the Wall. But I'm also gonna show you how you can use some simple props that you have around the house um, to help you feel more comfortable. And I'm gonna focus on shoulders, calves, and the hips, and probably the hamstrings too. So. Um, let's begin by working with the upper body, the arms. I'm gonna move over to the wall here and um, show you, first of all, something to um, open up the inner arms. Most of the time we're rounded forward, um, but, and the inner arm here doesn't get much stretching. So in order to stretch the inner arm, you would start with your hand, the body close to the wall, maybe not next to the wall, and the hand up the wall. Spread your fingers and hug the wall with your hand, draw your shoulder away from your ear. Now you can lift the left arm and kind of lean to the right and stretch from your ankle and your hip all the way up and through the torso, looking up or down to the left or to the right. And then from here, your left hand comes to your hip, and you're gonna swing the right arm behind you. Now this might be your range of motion. You may not, I can feel a um, kind of a tension in my uh, trapezius upper traps here. So, but if you bring the arm down behind you, and some people can walk in and get their rib cage next to the wall, that may not be comfortable, you might bend your elbow and press into your forearm and start to turn your body toward the left. Try to keep the shoulder away from the ear. Close your eyes so that you can focus on sensation and breathe very, very deeply. And as we're breathing, we're focusing on the sensation and we're focusing on elongating the tissues. If already, when your arm is back, you're feeling like nothing's happening, you would turn your palm up and start to turn the torso to the left. And then swing the arm up and down and behind you and just back and forth. Externally rotating the upper arm bone and internally rotating and then we'll go to the other side, balancing everything out. So we start with the left arm up, spread your fingers. You're welcome to do this at home. Not a lot of people have empty walls, but all you need is about a two to three and a half foot space next to the wall. Spread your fingers, draw the shoulder away from your ears. This might be your posture, maybe you're feeling enough already. Maybe raise the right arm and bend to the left, stretching the right side of the body. And the arm comes down, swing the left arm behind you, and turn the torso toward the right. Perhaps bending the elbow, pressing into the forearm and the hands, or maybe reaching the arm back and turning your palm up. Closing your eyes and breathing very deeply focusing on moving the sensation out from the places where you feel it most, and through the arm and through the fingertips. Bring your arm forward 
and turn your arm out and in and out and in. So much for the upper arms. A lot of people round forward. We round forward always. So if you have a long tie or a yoga belt, you can strap up. So you want this just below the shoulder blades. And then you're going to flip the straps behind you and cross them over. So then take strap in one hand and then the other. Come close to the wall. Draw the sides of the strap forward and you're drawing your shoulder blades toward each other and the shoulders down on the back. So now if you stand close to the wall, feet about hip distance apart, you've got the natural curvature in your spine. You're pressing your head gently into the wall. I have to remove my clip in order to do that. Press the head gently into the wall. And voila, standing straight. Deep inhalations and exhalations. There's an added uh, benefit here in that as you pull forward and draw the shoulders away from the ears, you're starting to engage your biceps too. Nice, deep inhalations and exhalations help you to calm down and to feel a little bit more relaxed amidst the work that's happening. Take one more breath and release. And like I said, you can do this with a long, long tie. I'm trying to think of what else you might have around the house if you don't have a yoga strap. These are available online though. They're pretty easy to get. Chairs are extremely useful. So I've got a chair here. Generally, the calf, the Achilles are um, tight. So if you position yourself in front of a chair and kind of bend your knees, bring your hands to your thighs, and then reach forward with your hands, step one foot forward and the other foot back. So as I press into my left heel and reach my arms forward, I can draw my right hip back, the left hip forward, stretching the hamstrings on the right side, the calf on the left, my lumbar spine, shoulder blades as my head dips down. Deep inhalations and exhalations help to create a sense of equanimity amidst the stretching. And then you switch sides. Nice deep breath. And then come forward, and I'm not holding these very long, just in the interest of time, because there's a lot more I'd like to show you. But at home, you can hold that as long as two or three minutes if it feels good. The longer we hold things, the more we open up the deeper tissues in the body. So one of my favorite things to do is to stretch my lower back and through a squat. Now, I don't have the kind of body that allows me to come into a deep squat with, with my heels on the floor without elevating my heels. So I usually roll up a blanket and squat down. And then I like to spread my knees and press my upper arms into my thighs, reach forward. It's a really lovely, lovely stretch for the lumbar spine. The blanket's helpful. Everybody has a blanket around. The more dense it is, the more support you get. And then to strengthen the quads, you might come up and then down and up and down and up and down and come all the way down and sit. I'm going to move off the blanket now and roll onto my back. So here, I'm going to lie down, and I encourage you to do it at home too, with my knees bent at a 90 degree angle and my ankles in line with my knees. So I'm making kind of a box shape or a square shape with the wall, and we're going to work on the hips.
So bring your arms, hips and the arms at the same time. Spread your toes, hug the floor with the, or hug the wall with your feet and engage the quads and your buttocks and your belly. And then exhale, bring your elbows and palms together and inhale, arms out to the sides and exhale, elbows and palms together and inhale, arms to the sides. So you're taking your shoulder blades off the back and then bringing them back together. You're stretching the shoulders, the deltoids, pressing in and then releasing. And now for the legs, the hips, the right ankle comes to the left thigh Encourage the right knee to move toward the wall. Hug the wall with your left foot and breathe, spread the toes on both feet. Nice deep inhalations and exhalations. Find a sense of peace. We call this the witness as we use our breath to move inside and find a place inside of ourselves which is not really affected by the sensations we're experiencing. We're observing so we can tell whether we're going too far or not. And then right foot comes to the floor, or the wall rather, and the left ankle on the right thigh. One side will always be tighter than the other, and for me it's the left side. So the right toes hug the wall and spread. I encourage my left knee to move toward the wall using my hand. And notice a lot of people will point the toes or let the ankle sickle. You want to press through your heel, spread the toes, keep the normal bend in your ankle, and then line up the second toe with the middle of your knee. It helps to protect your knee. Knees don't bend side to side. Deep breathing, breathing into your back body. Sense of equanimity and a little modal Nisa smile on your face. Go in one more breath. And then the left foot comes back to the wall. I'm gonna to move toward the wall a little bit more so I can get my buttocks against the wall. So to do that, I come up and have the strap handy. I bring one hip to the wall and then I roll onto my back and the legs are on the wall. Here, the buttocks is on the wall, the legs are on the wall. This is one of my very favorite resting places so, pressing through the heels stretches the backs of the legs. You can bring your arms out to the sides and work the shoulder girdle and the arms here, palms up, and then exhale, palms down, inhale, palms up, and exhale, palms down. The breath is deep and even such that the awareness to help to create an awareness inside that helps to observe rather than to react to what we're experiencing and feeling. Now, let your hands rest either to the sides or you can bring your hands to your belly and point and flex your feet, stretching the backs of your legs. You can do them together or alternate. Press through the heels, really work the legs, and then open the legs out to the side. Now here we're just working with gravity. So you'll notice that my toes are turning out. That uh, means that my thighs are externally rotating. Some people do it naturally. If you've had any dance training or ballet, they will naturally turn out now because you're conditioned that way. And then we're gonna work deep in the hips again. So allow the toes turn out and then turn them in 
and out and in and out and in. If this is uncomfortable with the legs far apart, you can bring your feet up, hip distance apart, turn the legs out and in and out and in. So we're working deep in the hips now to bring some synovial fluid in here and to move um, some fluid into uh, the attachments. Good. Keep pressing through the heels. And we press through the heels to stretch the backs of the legs. Spread the toes. And here we are not working just with gravity, but we're working with the muscular effort of the inner thighs, the adductors, the quadricep muscles, the hamstrings to stretch. It's helpful to keep the navel drawing in, but to keep a slight arching at the lower back so we're not flattening the back into the, into the floor. One more breath here. And then we bring our hands to the outer legs and use our arms to bring our legs together. I'm gonna use a strap, you can use a necktie, bringing my right knee in. I'm gonna hog my right knee in and simultaneously press my foot into the wall in front of me. If I just hug the leg in, I'm compressing the hip flexors on the right side. So if I press my foot into the wall very, very gently, I can create a little space in the hip flexors. My left leg is pretty, pretty neutral. And then take the strap, strap my right foot up, and take a hamstring stretch. So your heel might not move very far away from the wall. It doesn't matter. Now notice my knee is pressed in, so that's hyperextending the knee a little bit, not really healthy for the knee, so you want to keep a slight bend in the knee and press your foot into the strap, the strap into the foot. So we're in, I'm engaging the muscles of my leg, my quadricep muscles. It increases the potential for stretching the back of the leg. And then notice my arms, okay? I'm holding each end of the strap rather than this. And if I bring my arms, bend my arms, and bring them toward the floor at the same time, here I am also engaging muscles of my belly, shoulders away from the ear, shoulder blades toward each other. I can feel this in my biceps. One more breath. And then bring your right foot to the wall, and we'll bring the left leg in and press the left foot into the wall as we hug, use our hands to press into the shin. So again, we're engaging the quads on the left side, creating a little bit of space in the hip flexor area. And breathing nice and deeply. And then we strap the left foot up. Now I'm conditioned to have pretty stretchy hamstrings just because of all the yoga I've been doing uh, for the last 20 some years. But this might be your posture right here. And you can get a lot of stretching by holding on to each end of the strap, pressing your foot in. And right now with the knee bent, I feel this more in my quads, strengthening them. And then perhaps stretching bringing my elbows and upper arms to the floor. Keep pressing the foot into the strap and breathing deeply and observing. And one more breath. And I release. And bring the feet together. Open the knees to the sides. You can rock from side to side. Sometimes that feels really good on the lower back. Pressing foot into foot. Good, deep inhalations and deep exhalations.
Hands come to the sides of the legs. One more thing for the hips is if you walk, we walk our legs out to the sides, our feet out to the sides, turn the toes out slightly. So this is a supine frog. So you notice my ankles are wider than my knees, my knees are wider than my hips. Some people with really open hips can get their feet a little closer to the floor and some people can't get their feet as wide as mine are. It doesn't matter. What matters is where you're feeling it. Now I'm feeling some compression right in here, so to open up that, I would press my forearms to get a little more space, press my forearms into my thighs, hug the wall with my feet, engage my abdominal muscles, and try to engage the quadricep muscles too, and breathe deeply. So I'm strengthening and stretching and working in the joints at this simultaneously. And if I hug the wall with my feet rather than pressing into them as if I'm trying to get my heels to the floor, I'm also feeling this in my quads right and my calves rather. One more breath and then release. So, not only are we stretching, but we're strengthening as we use the wall. The wall helps us, gives us some resistance to stretch into. I'm gonna place my feet on the wall, just about the, where my toes start to come up off the wall, and then inhale, hug the wall with my feet, lift the pelvis, this is an inhale, and exhale, come back down. And inhale again, lifting up. And exhale back down. So here, this is really wonderful for strengthening the core. And to accentuate the strengthening of the core, we might put a block between our inner knees or down between the inner thighs, hug in as we lift up. You might come up as high as to holding onto the, sh balancing on the shoulders in the back of your head, or maybe just up a little bit and down a little bit, and up a little bit and down a little bit. This is a mini inversion. It's really good for the stimulating the thyroid and parathyroid glands. And hugging the block strengthens the inner thigh muscles, the muscles of the pelvic floor, your lower abdominal muscles, and your glutes. And the lower back down. If you are uncomfortable with your back, the um, sacrum against the uh, floor, you can take a blanket and lift up, place a blanket underneath. That tilts the pelvis, slight anterior tilt of the pelvis, and it makes lying on the floor a little bit more comfortable. Now, very often, this will be the last posture. It's either the first or the last posture in my classes at Karma. It's a lovely, lovely uh, restorative posture. The arms can come up as well, palms facing each other. And then just resting, resting, resting. Because the wrists are stacked over the elbows and over the shoulders, I'm not fighting gravity. I could stay here for quite a while, actually. And having the legs elevated, the feet elevated, and the arms elevated assists the lymph and the blood to flow back into the torso and back into the heart. I'm going to move slightly away from the wall. And finish up here with a spinal twist. I'm 
pressing my feet into the wall, drawing my shoulder blades together, making sure that I draw my navel down. Right hand comes to the outer left leg to increase the intensity of the twisting, and then the legs come back up, and twisting over to the left. Now, my twisting to the right for me has always been a little bit more difficult, so you'll notice my right shoulder doesn't come to the floor. So, a blanket underneath the arm assists the grounding of the upper arm bone and the opening. One more breath here, and then I'm gonna roll to my right side, left side, and sit up. So you see, we don't have to go to a studio. We can do yoga in our living room. We can use the things that we have around us to uh, increase our flexibility and our strength. The primary things are breath and awareness. Bring one hand to your heart, the other hand on top of it. Take a nice deep inhalation with eyes closed and a deep exhalation. Another deep inhalation and another deep exhalation. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Anchor the sit bones. Bring some awareness to the top of your head. And I like to end all of my classes in this way. Lift your arms, spread your fingers, take a deep inhalation, exhale, <laughs> and namaste. We hope to see you at, at Karma Yoga, the corner of Maple and Lasser. Tune in to um, our website, www.karma-yoga.net, and you can find us um, on the um, Bloomfield Community Television website. And namaste. <laughs> May the